So welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. I am currently watching a doe. She's standing right beside the sawmill down there, kind of checking things out. I mean, right beside the sawmill. But it is kind of a overcast and cool day today. It's actually pretty nice. And I checked the forecast for the next two weeks and I don't see a day where it hits 80 degrees. I'm not even sure if it's supposed to get over 75 or not. So I think fall was pretty much here. Uh, we already have some leaves turning. Uh, a few of them are hitting the ground. I'm kind of looking forward to it. It's my favorite time of year. But this afternoon I did just a little bit of brush hogging. I went and got two empty firewood baskets from a neighbor from a delivery the other day. I think I'm gonna start taking those baskets out to the clearing in the woods there. We have a bunch of firewood out there and the uh, split force log splitter. Levi split a basket full the other day and I think we'll kind of start stockpiling them out there because all the wood we're cutting now isn't for this winter, it's for the following winter. And then uh, by next year at this time, we'll have a nice road to get back to the clearing. So instead of taking up a bunch of room down there, for next year's firewood, we'll just start stockpiling it out in the woods. But anyway, today's video, I, uh, huh, I have a Cabela's credit card, okay? And I've had it for probably five years now. And you're probably aware of this, but you accumulate points with that credit card. And I make all our personal expenses, most of them, on that credit card. And I pay it off each month and you gain points. And I've had this master plan now for at least three years because the points don't expire where I was gonna get a new safe. I have a Liberty in the house and I wanted to get another Liberty, a real nice one. Kinda had it picked out and I wanted one for the building. Well, I got up to about, uh, I'm up to about $1,750, which doesn't quite get me there, but it's pretty close, right? And uh, every time, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very diligent when it comes to saving these points. Every time that I go to Cabela's or Bass Pro, they're ringing you up. They're like, do you want to use any of your points? I'm like, nope, holding on to them, you know? So it's all set to get a new Liberty safe. And uh, last week, I pull up on the internet there trying to pick out the exact model. And I must have hit news. And I see all these news articles about Liberty Safe, and then I see some uh, people online talking about them, a couple YouTube videos, some podcasts talking about them, and I'm like, oh, here we go, what's going on with this? So I looked into it, and here's what happened to the best of my knowledge. And I wanna read Liberty Safe's uh, statement on this. They really stepped in it, they did, and uh, I don't know what to think anymore, I don't. So basically what happened, I'm gonna tell you what I know, and then I'll read their statement. But there was a, the FBI contacted Liberty Safe because I guess they had a warrant to search somebody's property. And they wanted a backdoor code to get into this guy's gun safe. And Liberty Safe has these. I was unaware of that. I guess I never really thought about it. And I don't know how I feel about that. So if you have a Liberty Safe, they can get into that safe, give someone the combination to that safe. It might not be, I don't know how it all works, it might not be your exact combination, I doubt it is, but there's like a backdoor combination that will get them into any safe. I didn't know that was a thing. Now Liberty, they say that they're safe and secure and you know stored in some database. There is no database that's safe and secure anymore. And they also said it's kind of an industry standard to do that, and I can see right, where it's helpful. Uh, if somebody loses a combination to their safe, they could give them the proper identification and verify that it's theirs and they could help you get into your safe. I get that. But another part of me says it's kind of BS. I mean, if you buy a house off of somebody and you take possession of that house, the old owners don't keep a set of keys. I mean, can you imagine that? You bought your dream house and they said, Here's a set of keys. We're going to hold on to a set in case you can't get in. We'll always have them. We'll keep them safe. I'd be like, no way. You know what I mean? And uh, so I don't know how to feel about that. Or like, a, a, say you buy a car 
You know, do they keep a set of keys to the car? But then again, they can get in with OnStar. My biggest concern would be this. What if somebody at Liberty, or if they were hacked or something, and you know, let's say they sell a real high dollar safe to somebody, you know, like a big one, uh, big money, you know, they're gonna put some real valuables in this safe, and they have the backdoor code to get into that safe. They may wait six months. They're going to have your address. They're going to have a way to get into your safe. I, I don't like that. I don't. I don't know. But like I said, if you can't get into it, I guess it all comes back to personal responsibility. When you get a safe, you better know the combination and uh, be able to go from there. I, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. I, I really don't, but I don't like it. I do know that. But this is Liberty Safe's uh, public statement or whatever. At Liberty Safe, we are dedicated to safeguarding the rights and privacy of all our customers. It's a promise that remains deeply personal to our employees and leadership. Our company, one of America's oldest and largest safe manufacturers, which is true, but now they're owned by some private equity firm. So this isn't like your mom and pop business down the street making safes. They're owned by some private equity firm now. But our company, one of America's oldest and largest safe manufacturers, was founded on the belief that Americans should have the fundamental right to protect and safeguard their valuables and property. As a courtesy to our customers, Liberty Safe has long adhered to industry standards by maintaining a secure database of factory set combinations. This practice helps customers regain access to their safe for a wide range of reasons, including loss of the original combination, service requests, warranty issues. Liberty Safe processes over 4,000 requests of this type annually and provides combinations to safe owners only once they are provided clear documentation of their identity and their ownership of the safe. It says, we listen to our customers. Now, this is kind of their reaction, what they're doing now. We listen to our customers and update our products and practices in response to their evolving needs. Today, we're announcing a change that empowers our customers with greater control over their information. Effective immediately, existing customers can visit libertysafe.com pages slash combination removal and fill out the form to have our records of their access codes expunged. In the coming weeks, we'll be releasing a feature that gives every new customer this option when registering their safe. So I think they're doing the right thing as far as that, giving you the option, but really, you know, I just don't know if that information's safe or not. They're saying it's gonna be expunged. How do I know? How do you know, right? This change allows customers to take control of how their information is stored and protected. We understand that many of our customers are willing to assume the responsibility of safeguarding their own combination, while those who opt out of our data storage process will have limited recourse in case of lost combination. We respect their choice and we are here to support them in any way that's best for them. We have also revised our policies in cooperation with law enforcement. Going forward, we will require a subpoena that le legally compels Liberty Safe to supply access codes, but can only do so if these codes still exist in our system. So that was my other question. Did they have to give it? You know, I'm not a lawyer, obviously, or like a constitutional lawyer, but did they have to give them the combination that doesn't make any sense to me i don't get that part at all you know like i said you buy the safe you pay them you take ownership of it it's yours and even if they have a way to get in i'm not going to get into whatever the guy did i don't even know but i don't i don't know if they legally have to do that if they said hey we have a warrant to search this guy's property that would be like that would be like the fbi having a warrant for my neighbor's property and coming over here and saying, hey, we can't get in their door, but you got an excavator, go rip the door off so we can get in. How's that any different from that? Would I be legally bound to have to just help them? I don't think so, right? 
So I think it would have to be something, like I said, I'm not a lawyer, where it spells out, you know, a legal order or a warrant or a subpoena that tells Liberty Safe you have to do this. And besides, the, I mean, the FBI's got a budget of, it's over $10 billion, maybe 11 or $12 billion a year, 30-some thousand employees. Some just doesn't add up. You know what I mean? You mean to tell me out of 30,000 employees, they don't have someone that can get into a safe? Some, something doesn't add up there. So anyway, that was their statement. And here's what they said about the incident. On August 30th, 2023, Liberty Safe was contacted by the FBI requesting the access code to the safe of an individual whom they had a warrant to search their property. Our company protocol is to provide access codes to law enforcement if a warrant grants them access to the property. After receiving the request, we received proof of the valid warrant and only then did we provide them with an access code. Liberty Safe had no knowledge of any of the details surrounding the investigation at that time. Liberty is devoted to protecting the personal property and Second Amendment rights of our customers and has repeatedly denied requests for access codes without a warrant in the past. We do not give our combinations without proper legal documentation being provided by the authorities. See, I don't know if that is proper. I don't think it was proper, in my opinion, legal documentation just by them saying we have a warrant for this guy's property because in their statement, they're reviewing their policy on how they hand that then how they handle that and they say they are going to need a subpoena for them. So I don't think they really had to, but like I said, I have no idea. I don't. My biggest problem is I've got 1700 bucks to buy a new safe and uh, I don't know which one to get now. I don't know. I do know though, whatever I get, I'm going to make sure they don't keep the code. But like I said, all that stuff is secure database. There is nothing secure on a computer anymore. If someone wants into it, they're going to get into it. And the more people talk about this and them putting out all these statements and people realizing they're not going to hold on to that information any longer, someone with bad intentions may be trying to access that information right now. No idea. So my question to all of you, what do you think about this? I, I really don't, I don't know, you know? I don't think they should have access to your safe, but I can see where it's handy if you screw up. Don't know. It's a tough one. It really is. But anyone know of a safe out there that doesn't do this? And what other brands are out there? Liberty has always kind of been the name, at least for myself and what everybody around here I know buys. I don't know. I need to look that up. If you can rec recommend a good one, maybe like a small business that... Uh, that does it. Like I said, Liberty started off as a small business, but now they're owned by some big private equity firm. Yeah, I, I don't know. Usually I have an opinion on everything, you know? I don't know what to think about this, except I'm in a holding pattern right now on my safe until I uh, figure this out, you know, what I want to do. I did see one Fort Knox made in Utah, but I think a Liberty safe is made in Utah. And you never know, all these companies, a lot of them are all kind of intertwined you know what i mean or they rebrand them they do the same thing with tractors a company will make a tractor then they're rebranded with different names you know is that the same way in the safe industry i have no idea so if anyone has any good information better yet anybody that works for one of these safe companies that's american made uh makes a good quality fireproof theft proof safe and they don't keep your information let me know in the comments or if you if you are a safe company feel free to comment or send us an email at outdoorswiththemorgans at gmail.com don't know what to do i was all ready to pull the trigger on a safe here i sit safeless hm. well, i got one but i need another one i'm out of room but anyway before i wrap this up a couple other things number one uh, if you're interested, sign up for our newsletter. All you have to do, go to our website, outdoorswiththemorgans.com. As soon as you go to that website, a pop-up box will appear. You can enter your email address and you will be enrolled in our newsletter. Don't send us an email saying, put us on your newsletter. Just go to the website, pop-up box, put it in. 
and we're sending out newsletters about every uh, two weeks, kind of a look back of what has happened and a look ahead, and we will do, we'll let you know in the next newsletter when the fire starter will be available again. We're starting to get a lot of requests for that. We're currently out of stock, and uh, <clears throat> the next go around we'll have a bunch of uh, four pound bags as well. It's getting to be that time of year. I can't wait to uh, have the first fire in here this, this winter. That wood stove worked great last year, but yeah, looking forward to that. But yeah, sign up for our newsletter. Also check out daughter Eva's uh, latest video. She's doing a really, really good job. And I'm not just saying that because of uh, she's my daughter, but she is light years ahead of me when I started a channel. She's just... She speaks very well in front of a camera. She's confident. She's always happy. And now she's doing a couple videos of moving into college. I think the next one she's doing is like a workout video. The one before that was uh, learning to run the excavator. Her biggest video so far is uh, she did a review on the Super Duty and the GMC and went over things that I never consider when looking at a truck. It was neat seeing it from a perspective of an 18 year old girl and uh, totally unbiased. She's got nothing in it, but uh, yeah, it was a really good video. It was pretty interesting. I told her she should do one on the Jeep versus Bronco, but she's a little biased. I'll tell you right now, she likes the Jeep uh, better than the Bronco. I don't know how I feel about that. I said to someone the other day, if I was driving them across the country to like go to Moab and trail ride, I would take the Bronco because the ride across the country would, would be better. But if I was going to do some serious mudding around here, I'd probably take the Jeep. I don't know. But yeah, we'll have to see if she does a video on that. That would be a good one. But uh, both of them are very similar vehicles, but they've got some big advantages over the other one you know in a lot of different ways but anyway i think that's about it i'm just rambling on please let me know about these safes i don't know what to do i had it figured next trip to west virginia hauling one home in a dump trailer setting it up in the building now i don't know what to do